This conference will now be recorded. Okay, as we stated last time, uh, the primary book we're using is the Financial Manager Accounting Primer. And your goal is you're going to have a job like this. And to get to that goal, you got to be doing the studying. Okay, so. So we have our, our goal of where we're going and how we're going to get there. Some information about careers as a certified public accountant for the accounting majors. And then let's look at our main takeaway for the course. Let's look at our main takeaway for the course. You're going to learn how to prepare an income statement, a statement of retained earnings, a balance sheet, all of that by midterm, and a statement of cash flow at the midterm. This is you know, the main takeaway of what we're trying to do in this course. So always keep that in mind. Professor, uh, the screen you sharing, I can't see. It's, it's real blurry. Is it blurry for everybody? Yeah. It's blurry for me, sir. It's blurry. But I just zoomed in. You kind of got to zoom in to see it. Okay. I can't see it either. Let me see if I can adjust it. Thank you for letting me know. Uh, Start sharing. Is this any better? I still don't see anything. Yeah, it's better. And of course, you should have this information in course content. So I did put a lot of this in course content for you also. All I'm doing is going through page by page in the primer. So these are my notes. And if you get the primer, you, you see I'm on a certain page. So a second thing we want to do is make sure you go ahead and get that primer so you can follow along. You can review ahead of time and follow along. But this is coming straight uh, from the primer. And what I'm able to do is to uh, just show that, you know, because I'm the author of it. Okay, so the accounting equation, as that's equal liabilities plus common stock, plus retainer. That's the foundation of what we're doing. Okay, that's the foundation of what we're doing. And then we talked about double entry accounting. So in accounting, in accounting, the double entry concept basically says that when there's a transaction between two business people, two parties, each party receives something of value and gives up something of value. What they receive is the debit. What they give up is the credit. So it's never one side to anything. Take, for instance, payment of your tuition and fees this semester. You paid it. You know, so you have the right to education. That's what you've received. What did you give up? Some people gave up cash. Some people gave up this, you know, gave scholarships. Some people gave up loans. Some people gave up a combination. So it's not that you paid the tuition and fees, but how did you pay them? Some people have a deferral. So that's the way accounting works. It's what happens and how. 
What did you receive? What did you give up? And we work this making journal entries. You know, that, that's what we're doing. We're making journal entries. And the first one, we're, you know, we're just looking, reviewing this example again. If you run a business and you bought a car, if you paid cash for that car, you debit auto and credit cash. You receive the car, you paid out cash. If you borrowed money to buy the car, you debit auto and you credit note payable. That's if you borrow money. And if you did a combination, you still got the auto. So notice that auto is being debited each time for 10,000, but the credit is changing in the second, in the third case, we're crediting cash and we're crediting those payable. So we're crediting two things, cash and notes payable. The credits have to equal the debits. So anytime there's a journal entry, virtually anytime you're doing anything, your debits have to equal the credits. Hello. Kaylin, uh, what's the name of that song that's like, uh, mommy used to play it and it'd be like. Okay, what's the name of that song? Name of that song is the accounting cycle. Okay, so to get to those financial statements, we got this accounting cycle. And for the first two weeks, we only work with steps one and two. Uh, then we go to three and four, five and six, and then seven, getting the financial statements prepared. And we'll be here, seven and eight, and midterm but right now we're trying to get one and two because if you don't get one and two correct you cannot go to three and four so we want to make sure we get one and two correct how to make how to read a transaction analyze a transaction and make a journal entry and we're going to spend two weeks on that and at the end of two weeks I want everybody to be able to make a journal entry in two minutes. To make a journal entry in two minutes. Uh, let's go to our transaction types and I tell you to have a hard copy of this. When cash comes in, there are six ways. Right now, we only deal with one, two, three and five. If cash comes into the business, the type is a one, two, three, or five. So we, when cash is coming in, we're going to read that transaction and see if it's a one, two, three, or five. We always going to debit cash, but what we credit depends on the type it is. If we issue common stock, we're going to credit common stock. If we have cash sales, we're going to credit sales. If we collect on receivables where we've done the work and people owe us money, we're going to credit the receivable. And if we borrow money, we're going to credit note payable. So when we analyze transactions, when we analyze transactions, we simply identify what type. And then this chart tells us what we're going to debit and what we're going to credit. If we're paying out money, it's seven, eight, nine, and 10, and we credit in cash. If it's a seven, it means we purchased an asset and we got to indicate what asset was purchased. If it's eight, it means that we paid a liability. We got to indicate what liability was paid. If we paid an expense, we're going to debit an expense, but we got to indicate which one. We credit in cash. And if we pay a dividend, we're going to credit dividend, debit dividends and credit cash. So those are the eight of the 11 types of cash, cash coming in or cash coming out. This is what that journal entry is going to look like. So you're always reading the transaction and see where we are. 
if we buy some on, on credit, we use a credit card as opposed to a debit card, then it's going to be a tight 12. You know, on a debit card, cash comes out right away. On a credit card, you pay the cash later. So when you purchase an asset, utilize a debt. You're going to debit the asset purchase, and you're going to credit the liability created. The other one is 15, a sale on account. If you have a sale on account, that means you did the work, but you haven't been paid yet. So you have a receivable. Receivable is a good thing. You're going to get money in the future. And we we're just going to set it credit, uh, credit sales, but it's sales, revenue, fees, or whatever. We're crediting a revenue account. Those are all of the transaction types that you'll be identifying this first two weeks. Are there any questions on the transaction types? Does everyone have their hard copies? Okay. Now, once you determine a transaction type, you got to come to this chart of accounts and get the actual account. Each account that you use has a number. So when, if it's cash, we're debiting cash. If we buy an asset, is it inventory? 120, supplies 130, prepaid insurance 131, land 200. We got to say which asset it is. So something with a number by it. We do not debit asset paid. Same thing with expenses. We got to say, what expense it was. So we do not debit expense paid. You got to pick out one of these. So your own entry types, you need your hard copy. Chart of accounts, you need your hard copy. So when we're you know, working problems, taking exams or quizzes, you have this right at hand to flip through and you're not changing a screen to do it. Are there any questions on journal entry types? Chart of accounts. Are there any questions? What does NB stands for? That's the normal balance in the account, and we'll come to that later. But in general, uh, assets have their normal balance is a debit. That is for assets, debits a good thing. Their normal balances are debits. Liabilities, their normal balance is a credit. You can have debit and credit entries, but that normal balance is be a credit. And we'll be getting to that in two weeks from now. Uh, it's the sign of the equation that we own, and debits are good. See, this is the asset side. Remember, the asset equals the liabilities plus the common stock. So, the, you know, cycles equity. So this becomes the credit side. So on the asset side, debits are a good thing. On the credit side, on the liability and cycles equity side, those accounts are going to be credits, and they're going to equal the debits. So we'll be in the that eventually, but we're just looking at that's the normal balance. When we make journal entries in general, we're crediting revenue, okay? And then we debit in expenses. So when you make journal entries in this course for the most part, especially over the first two to three weeks, if it's revenue, you're gonna credit revenue. If it's an expense, you're gonna debit the expense. Got that? So we're always, Can you say that again? when we make journal entries, if it's revenue, we're always going to credit revenue. If it's an expense, we're always going to debit the expense. So whenever you're making a journal entry, revenue is going to be on the credit side. Expenses are going to be on the debit side. Then let's look at cash. When cash comes in, you debit cash. When cash goes out, you credit cash. So those rules will help you with most transactions. If cash comes in, you're going to debit it. 
if cash goes out, you're going to credit it. Whenever sales is credited, whenever there are expenses, they're debited. So that's telling you how most journal entries are going to look. That's telling you how most journal entries are going to look. Okay. So those are like keywords, right? Like sales, we automatically know that's debit. No, we it's said sales is a what? Expense? No. Does your revenue come in? That's a credit. That's a good thing. Notice the expenses are debits. So when you pay your rent, is that a good thing or a bad thing? In terms of your, your uh, bank account. It's a bad thing. <laughs> okay. So you debit the rent expense and you credit cash. So debits the cash are good, credits the cash are bad. So, you know, think about it personally. This is what would happen. But in general, in the course, we're going to credit sales. But then when we're dealing with all of these expenses, when we make the journal entries, see if I can get another color here. That yellow will work. No, that doesn't work. Blue. Okay, that works. They're all debited. Got it? So when you make journal entries, you're crediting sales, the revenue, you debit in expenses. So when you're not debiting those expenses, then you probably have done something wrong. So that's does that help? Yeah, yes, it's making sense. I'm just trying to write down and like take small notes on my thing. But well, see, you have this kind of account and you want to put the notes on this kind of account, how it's going to help you. Right. Okay, so eventually, so you go to that chart of account, put down those notes that you're making. And once you've done that, then you print it. So when you have to make a journal entry, you can just make that journal entry very easy. Okay, then we begin to say, okay, let's illustrate some journal entries. And we had 10 situations. And the first situation is typically always the way we start. You can't have a business unless you have a bank account. And you put some money in the bank and you get back what? A stock certificate. So once your money goes in the company, it's there. And you have a stock certificate, but you just can't go around taking out the money you put in the company. Okay. So our first transaction is we in, we invest ten thousand in business, and what type did we say that was? So we on transaction one. When we invest money in the business, when we start the business and give the money to our business, what is our type? One. That is a type one. When we go to type one, what does it tell us? Let's go to type one. It tells us that we issue stock. We need to debit cash and credit common stock. Okay. So that's what that's telling us. So we read the transaction. We said it was a type one. Okay, it's a type one. In a type one, we debit cash and credit common stock. Now we need to go down here to the chart of accounts and get the numbers. Cash is what? 100. Common stock is what? 400. So let's make this journal entry. We're going to debit cash. Ten thousand. And we're going to credit common stock. 
for ten thousand. Are there any questions? Can everybody make that entry? So if you could make that one journal entry, you head of some of my accounting two students now. Okay. Is there any question on that journal entry? All right, let's look at number two, cash received for car rental revenue. So this is cash coming in, so we know what? Transaction. Debbie. So in journal entry two, we're saying that it's a type what, two? What are, what are we debit in a type two? Cash. We're going to debit cash. What are we on credit? Sales. Debit cash. Type two. And we're going to credit sales. And what's our account number for sales? Is that 500? Is sales 500? Yes. Yes, sir. We'll be looking and tell me so I don't have to flip back. It's 500. It's 500. Is it 500? Thank you. Are there any questions about this transaction? So what did the business get? 500, what did it give up? Inventory, service, or whatever, sale. That's the second journal entry. Are there any questions? You have some extra zeros. It says 500,000 instead of 50. Oh, I thought someone was telling me 500. Okay. Keep me straight. Because you all are going to have to be straight in a little while. You all are going to have to be straight in a little while. Okay. Because we have a room game that we're going to play in a little while. Let's move along to transaction three. What's happening in transaction three? We've done some work and we're collecting from these customers. So remember, you know, always that we're looking at it from a business standpoint, we've done some work we're collecting cash from customers. Cash is coming in, so you got to give me a type one to six. What type is it? Type three. Type three. Once again, cash is coming in, so we debit in cash. So what are we going to credit? Account. We go into credit account receivable. What's the account number for account receivable? One ten. One ten. One ten. What was our amount? Twenty five. Twenty five. So this is, you know, the basics of learning accounting. 
Every business that has to do this, that has transactions, has got to get them recorded. And so what I tried to ensure is you can make journal entries. Is if you can't make the journal entries, you can't do those other steps. And of course, you timing yourself to do this in, in two minutes. What happened in transaction four? So we're up to transaction four now. You did what? They received a loan. They received a loan. So what's our type going to be? Cash is coming in. It's got to be five. one through six. Okay, that's a type five. Once again, we're debiting cash. So kind of notice I'm just coming straight down the list. Uh, cash is 100 and, and the uh, credit is the short term note, right? Is a uh, notes payable, which is isn't that short term? In your chart of accounts, isn't there a short term notes payable? There isn't one listed that way. OK, we'll just go to know what's note payable. Under long term liabilities, it's three fifty. Okay, that's fine. Okay. okay. And our amount was how much? Uh, twenty five thousand dollars. So what happens sometimes when people are learning accounting, they gloss over this. You know, they say, well, blah, blah, blah. And then as they get to, you know, you always got to make some journal entries and you need the foundation in that. What's number five? May I ask a question? Yes. For the one that we just did, um, which was transaction number four, I think in my notes last class, you put that the short term notes payable was 306. Is that right. what we should be using? Yeah, that would be better. Let's just put 306 in here and just add that account or change it on your chart of accounts because it is a short term note. But if you, you know, if you had notes payable, you know, I would not mark it wrong, but a short term note is more. Long term okay. notes last more than a year on a short term note you got to pay it back within a year so when you got a working capital loan it's typically you want it back in a year but if you buy a car then most times you're taking two or three years to pay for it okay but thank you for that let's move on to number five you purchase supplies paying for a thousand paying cash of a thousand so now we on transaction five. Now we starting to pay cash out, right? So what's our type? Seven. Okay, seven. And when we uh, begin to pay cash out, cash is always going to be what? Credited. But we going to debit the asset that was purchased in this case. And so what was purchased? Supplies. Auto. We bought supplies. What's our account number for supplies? 130. Oh, and what's our account number for cash again? Wow. As you can see, most of your transactions are a tip is going to involve cash. And we bought a thousand dollars in supplies, correct? Correct. What's our next transaction? When we get the number six, what do we have? Uh, we paid our accounts. Paid on accounts mm -hmm. payable. This is like paying your credit card. So what happened to your cash account when you pay your credit card? 
it gets debited. Well, mm. from the standpoint that we're looking at, remember, when cash comes in, we debit it. When cash goes out, we credit it. And so in this case, we pay it on an account payable. So we're going to debit the account payable. We crediting cash. What's the number for account payable? Three oh one. Three oh one. What was our amount? One thousand. No, sorry, five thousand. We said this was a type what? What's, what's our type when we pay a liability? It's eight. That's an eight. So whenever you pay a liability, it's a type eight. You debit the liability paid and credit the cash. Now we own the number seven. What happened to number seven? We paid our rent. So it's cash coming in or going out when you pay your rent? Going out. Whatever. So we got the credit. So we're going to debit rent. Expense. Remember we said we always debit expenses as we're starting off. We're going to credit cash. You know the account number for cash is a hundred. What's the account number for rent expense? Six fifty-one. How much rent did we pay? Three thousand. Well's our time. We never did say that. Well's our time. Nine. So when you pay an expense, it's a type nine. Okay. It's going to eight. We pay dividends. It's a type so what's nine. our type when we pay dividends? What's the transaction type, type again? Type ten. All right, if it was if the question is rent expense, the type was nine. Thank you. But okay, but as we come to dividends, it's the type ten. Once again, we're paying our cash. And what a dividend is, when you invest your stock, the way you get reimbursed for that or paid for or rewarded for that investment is the company pays dividends. So if you buy stock in a company, you can't get your stock back, but you you know you can the company can declare dividends and you get your money that way. So for the company that's paying the dividends, paying the dividend, we just debit it, and we go credit cash. What's our account number for dividends? 455. What's our account number for cash? 100. And what was the amount? 2000. What's transaction nine? What did we do in transaction now? Uh, purchased on an account. So that would be 12. That would be a type 12. What do we debit in a type 12? What does 12 say we debit? Asset purchase. Asset purchase. What did we purchase? 
what do we purchase? Supplies. We purchase supplies. We can pay cash for supplies or we can buy them on account. And what are we going to credit now? What are we going to credit? The accounts payable. The account payable. And what was the amount? Eight thousand. What is our final transaction? It's number 10, right? Car rental revenue. Earn from corporate customers. When the person who cuts my lawn shows up, I have a contract with the owner of the company. And his workers come and they cut each week, maybe $200 a week. At the end of the month, he sends me a bill for $1,000. He doesn't necessarily want me to pay the workers, uh, but he let the workers work and that's a good thing. And then he creates a receivable. So in this case, we're renting cars for corporate customers. And these customers, you know, they just come in and rent. They work with Exxon Mobil, they come in and rent. And then we're gonna build Exxon Mobil at the end of the month. So in this case, we're gonna build Exxon Mobil for 30,000. So what's our type gonna be? What's our type going to be? What? 15. 15. That's the only one left. You know, we're going to do all of them. So, what do we debit in a 15? Accounts receivable. So, we're going to debit account receivable. That's 110, correct? Yes. And what are we going to credit? Sales. Credit sales. And that's 500. So there's two ways we get sales. We can get cash right away or we can get cash later. And what was our amount? What was our amount of these sales? 30,000. 30, 30,000. Now, let me explain something to you that 15 has to occur before you can have a three. That is, when you make that sale, we debit account receiving credit sale, then when we collect the cash, we're collecting from this uh, sale that we previously made. So we get the three, we debit cash and account, credit account receivable. We do not credit sales. We've already recognized the sale here. We just, we're collecting the cash later. So in actual practice, this transaction would have occurred after the sale, but I'll just keep them in that order. So before we can have a three, we have to have a 15, but we did the work and build the customer and then we come back later and collect the cash. Are there any questions? Are there any questions? Well, that's, that's 
sounds good. That sounds good. Now, I sent you all a problem, correct? Yes. I sent you all a problem. Yes, so where, where did you send the problem to? Because I'm not getting access to any of this. Right. The normal place, Elmer, but you don't have access, but I, I'm going to send it to you. Okay, so where are you at? Did you get the other stuff I sent? Yes, sir. I'm going to have to print it out after the class. Well, that's okay. Uh, let's see. What did you send it on? Because I didn't get anything. I didn't get anything either. Oh. Did anybody get anything? Was it on Blackboard? On Blackboard, when you try to access everything, it gives you an error code. At least I think it's because it's from 2021. Uh, I was able to open my cross console. Let's see. Let me see, let me see if I can find this. Does anyone see a journal into practice problem? Oh yeah, I see that. I have one. Can you give us one with a chart on it? Can I what now? Give us one with like that looks like yours. Like it doesn't have the chart for us to like fill out. It just it has like yeah. Unless you want to make it. Well, let's let me see if I can share something else with you all. Uh, journal entries. I actually have an Excel spreadsheet in there for you all, okay? So there's an Excel spreadsheet. So what I want you to do is to pull up the Excel spreadsheet. I will send the others to you, but I want you to get used to using Excel because it's going to help us down the road. Excel is just like Word, but in a in accounting and finance, Excel adds for us, okay? It adds things up for us. So I'm going to send that to you. But going back to that problem that we had, it's always good to have a little competition and some fun in class, right? Would y'all agree with that? Right. Y'all agree with that? Okay. I agree when you have all that you need to do it with. Well, you see, I'm, I'm going to work to make sure, uh, solve that problem. Because you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put you all in teams. Okay. So what I want you all to do is to see how many journal entries you can do. So. You're going to have a recorder, and you all are going to be making these journal entries and getting them ready and submitting them. Uh, so you got the Excel spreadsheet. Let me get this problem open again. Guess this round is somewhere. Too much to have, but I'll get those to you. But what I want to do 
is to flipping to the uh, problem now. Let's see, share. On the Excel spreadsheet where it says location part one, two, and three, what does that mean? Don't have to worry about that yet. You're just going okay. over to, uh, all you're doing is going over to type right now. You don't have to worry about the other part yet. Okay. So I'm gonna put you in teams. You get a recorder and I wanna see how many of this 13 you all can get work as a team. Okay, that's not a good deal. So I'm gonna put you all in teams and you. I hope these teams work out to your liking we'll use them next week too when we start the journal entries and what we will initially do would be everybody will give a journal entry but the team will get together and work with each person in the team so everybody learn that is we don't want to be like the Texans and lose all our games <laughs> so so the whole t so the team's got to work together. So, so you know, we're learning and working together. And a lot of, you know, a lot of time in, uh, in terms of learning, you know, I explain things, but I want you all to discuss them, you know, and work together because that's a major part of the learning, your discussions and working together. So there are 13 journal entries. And so we're going to see, we'll give a bonus to the team that gets the most of them right. But this is a attendance quiz, so it doesn't count against you. It only counts extra for you. So I think I'm going to create five breakout rooms, okay? So I'm going to create five breakout rooms. You're going to be automatically signed. I don't know you. You don't know each other. Get together and learn to work together to help each other so you, you know, you're not in this by yourself. So elect a recorder, a leader, team leader, and a recorder. And for the first week or so, you will work in these teams and learn to do these journal entries. I want you to do it on the Excel spreadsheet. So one spreadsheet coming from each team, okay? Elect the team leader. Elect the recorder who can pull up that Excel spreadsheet to submit it. And then you'll be submitting the journal entries and we probably will continue with this next week as we work with that study problem. Okay. Our rooms are there. Start breaking. Break. Go. Doesn't know, doesn't, I don't know why it doesn't want to. Let's see.
Oh, Mr. Boy. I'm saying. Um, I have to leave at 3.30 because I'm not in Houston right now. So I'm trying to see what do you need me to do so I won't be behind. Let's work, work on that. We're just, you know, working sort of bonus, but that's steady problem. So just work on the uh the in class practice problems with the spreadsheet? Right. Okay. Thank you so much. Donnell Thomas. Put your cut your put your uh, screen on. Put your uh excuse me, your uh, mic on. Put your mic on. Okay. For some reason, are you in a a, gr a room? No. Okay. I don't I can't hear you right now. Send me an email because I can't hear you. So send me an email.
Okay, did we get them all worked? No. 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 Mm -mm. no. Almost. Almost. We got to number five. We got to number 12. Oh, y'all did good. Was that Martha? No, sir. We only, I think we got to number three or four. We didn't get that far. Mm -mm. Okay. Group five got to 12. Group five got to 12. I believe we got to 12 as well. Okay. So there's a link for you to submit what you've done. So what I want you to do is to submit it. So one person submits, but I want the team, all team members on there, okay? So one person submits, but all team members are on there. So this is just a practice. It's extra, but to get you looking at this on your own, okay? So that's what we were trying to do. I know. We, I think some of us may have forgotten our team numbers. Like I was sharing my screen, so I didn't really pay any attention to the team numbers. So can, can you like let us know what team we were on? Yeah, I, don't I do remember. Um, oh. our team, so. yeah. <laughs> oh, you, you, it's gone forever. Damn. Oh, okay, well. <laughs> you were supposed to select the team later, whatever. Okay, okay. well. Um. But for those teams who remember sending in for me and everything. Okay, let's see if we can share this.
can you see this problem? Yes. Okay. Yeah. This is the problem that we start on next week. Everybody will have a journal entry. Everybody will have a journal entry. So I have to come up with a strategy. But my basic plan would be that you'd be in teams and you'd have a journal entry. You know, number based on the number of the teams, you work on those, and then you then each individual would present, which everybody would have a chance to talk to someone. So that when the presentations are made, you familiar with all the journal entries. Now, on this journal entry study problem, is very important that by midterm. You will need to have worked the first 40 journal entries. You're going to need the first 40 journal entries. Now, we're going to go over those first 40 journal entries. So as we're going over them, we need to be putting them on an Excel spreadsheet. So you only got to work one, but eventually you'll be responsible for all 40 as you need to. So you're working your one and you're learning how to work the others. My A students are going to and work all four. My A students are going and gone and work their 40 journal entries because they know they're responsible for them. But I have to make sure everybody can do one journal entry. Uh, you know, it's very easy just kind of to sit back. So everybody is going to have to do one journal entry. So. We will come up with a strategy. We may have to reformulate teams on Tuesday. Uh, and of course, you know, you can create, you know, if you know the team and, and everything, you can look at that. But I, you know, I got to have the teams balanced somewhat too. So I'll be looking at all of that. When you're on a team, if you understand the material and you explain it to someone, you're going to understand it even better. Just like when I teach, you know, I have to be able to understand it better. So always be ready to help someone. If you don't understand, go ahead and get the help, but don't be a drag on the team. You, know, you go ahead and you try. Everybody should be able to do one journal entry. So one of the things about the teams would be uh, the team could get together and, you know, they may have, say, the first eight journal entries. The team could let everybody decide which one of those journal entries they wanted to work. So strong team members, which, you know, would take the hard ones, things like that. So, you know, that's kind of the strategy. But at the end of the day, you've got 40 journal entries. They do start to repeat, but that 40 is simply those 10 that we work with. They just repeat. Remember, how many minutes do you have to make a journal entry? Two. You got two minutes to make a journal entry because you got those other steps to get through to eventually. So... You read the journal entry, you you know, you determine the type, you put the accounts down, you try to do that in two minutes. So when we're going over it, you know, you're only going to have two minutes. So we will probably be working in some fashion like that next week. But there are 10 journal entry points that come in when you do your one journal entry. So you need to make it your business to do a journal entry next week. You need to make it your business. If you do one journal entry, you get 10 points. So that should be motivation for you to select the journal entry and do it correctly for your first individualized points of the grading period. Are there any questions? Yes, I have a question. Um, Professor Boyd, um 
are these classes that are being recorded, are they going to be posted anywhere so that we can go back for reference? Yes. Uh, I have a okay. YouTube account where the classes are. Okay, okay. so you go to, I think that it's listed there, and you can find some prior classes too. So there's a Joseph Board Accounting YouTube account that shows the lectures in over a period of three or four years. Uh, and then these lectures will, you know, these, the ones we're doing now will be at the very front. Right. Do we just okay, go to YouTube this or is it in course content? You see, these are 4K videos, and so they can't get in course content. Oh, okay. You know, it's, it's, it's a limit on file size. So it's, it's a video, so it's good. You can put it on a big screen, a TV, and everything like that as we have some spreadsheets, and you can see it better. Uh, the other thing is that I'll, I may be able also to mail the link to you. So I'll look at that, but they change everything and I'll get clear on that. But I would try to, if I can, send out a link in the email as well as put them on the YouTube channel. Okay. Okay. Is it possible that we can just possibly take a screenshot of the questions that we did in class? So the questions that we worked in class. If you can what you mean, to take a screenshot? The ones that you worked on? The ones that we worked with you. I noticed that they are repetitive and it'll just help guide us to what we need to look at. Well, I'll speak for myself. I won't say the we. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what? when you say screenshot, a screenshot of what now? So if you go back to the questions that we worked earlier together as a class, mm -hmm. as, as a class in the classroom, if Correct. you just pull that up, I think we did one through one through nine or something like that. Mm-hmm. Okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah, uh, if I, I just want to take a, a screenshot of it so that way I can use it for reference as well. And see you upload. Good point. Mm -hmm. Yes, that. This, mm -hmm. yeah. Now, in yeah. general, now, in general, I want you to have your Excel spreadsheet up. Uh, and I want you to uh, be uh, working along with me. I don't want to just kind of watching as we work. And so you should always be manually making these journal entries as we, you know, uh, and I didn't say that earlier, but from now on, make sure you are manually making the journal entries. Does everybody have access to Excel? No. Okay. So what I will do too is I will put some journal sheets in there also. So I'm going to put some journal sheets like this in there also, so you have an option. But as we are working, Make sure you always, okay, here's the next set. And here is the final set. Now what I'll probably do is to put this in Excel, you know, this, this answer sheet here, like so, you know, most, they are repeating, as you said, you just gotta get the right type. And most of the things, you know, they stay the same. I'll try to get this to you some way. You know, one thing, I'll just put the solution in course content in that same section on the counting cycle. If you have any issues, open it, then you email me, then I'll send it to you by email. There any other questions? Uh, uh, Professor, are we going to continue to use GoToMeeting for the remainder of the, the duration of the class? Uh, for a non-COVID reason, we will be doing it uh, at least for the you know next thirty days or so. Okay, I was just asking because this 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 system is really not too compatible with my uh, computer. Gotcha. 
It's now, not compatible with mine either because everything is blurred and I'm, it's it's very hard to see. Now, what you if if there is an issue, let me know, and then what you can do would be to uh, I can have the chair put you in another section. So I don't really want to go to another section. I just <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to go to another section either. <laughs> Right. We're going to work it out some kind of way. Uh, Sometimes people okay. go to campus and use a computer. But as I say, I'm committed that you're going to learn it as if we were there. And based on what my what students are saying in my accounting two classes, uh, Students that I didn't teach say they didn't learn how to make journal entries. So that is, I can ask a student to make this first journal entry and they can't make it. So I don't know what happens or how they're learning or what. But I think the approach that we're using uh, is conducive to learning. So we'll work on it some kind of way. I'll just have to adjust to it. Uh, you know, we have to work on office hours uh, and see. So we just get a creative way so that it will work. But if you are here and you are trying, I'm committed to two things. Number one, that you're going to learn just as well as if you were in the classroom. And number two, that you're going to pass the class. That's my commitment. If you're in here with your screen on and you're doing the work. Okay. Are you able to um, use the Blackboard Collab? The university has moved to uh, Zoom. The Blackboard Collab, you know, there are problems and, and the other issues that students some a lot of time they get out of blackboard get kicked out or they have problems this is always up because it's independent but the blackboard co collab does not work that well and the university has moved to zoom so when when you got spreadsheets and you're doing what i'm doing uh you know, when the pandemic first started i tried to collab it didn't work that well and so what we're using now, I paid for it personally. So we'll look at it and see. Let's discuss it, and we just have to see what how we're going to do it and make it work for you all, okay? Someone says, can we use Zoom? Excuse me, Professor. Yes. Do we have a question key for um, senior age? Great. I couldn't understand you. I say, do we have a course key for Cengage? A course key for Cengage? Yeah. What you mean? Say it again for me. What do you mean, course key? Basically, um, I have Cengage Unlimited, and I'm trying to enroll in your course, and I, I have no way to find the class. OK, there is a. I think I put, it's, it's on the syllabus to contact person. Yes, sir. You, no, um, I don't need help with Cengage. I just need like the course key to find your class. Not the access code that we're like you're paying for, but I need the course key so that your class to your class. You only put the ISBN number. I need the course key. Shit. Our class is on Cengage. Say so what? Is our class through Cengage? Yeah, the, the, the it's yeah. not through Cengage, but the, the text is published by Cengage. What? So it's not a, it's not, I'll check into that, but uh, basically uh, you get the text and we use this, this medium here. So we'll check on other things like that. Uh, unfortunately, I got a four o'clock class and so let's try to be on 15 minutes early next time so we can discuss these things. So let's Have you taken a screenshot for attendance? 
uh, I'm gonna give y'all free pass this week because we have issues and everything, and some students have left. So, but since you want a screenshot, I I just want to make sure I count for ten minutes. Shift Command Three. Now we have it, but I'm gonna be leaning this first. Okay. Okay, so I got to leave now because I got another class coming up. We'll be back and we'll be on 15 minutes early to discuss these things. Have a good. One. Thank you. You too. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one. All right.